Zombie Tech. <sighs> Welcome to Zombie Tech, a forum for engineers, scientists, and inventors to ponder on the technologies needed to survive the inevitable zombie apocalypse. She's Addie. He's Whisker. And who do we have this week? Today we have Nikolai Georgiev of Open Source Ecology. And uh, I guess we'll just dive right in. Hi, Nikolai. <laughs> Hi, Adi. So um, this Open Source Ecology project, uh, you know, it's kind of been the the it thing, the 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 baby of the open source world. And it's kind of been uh, just talked about all over the place. Can you tell us a little bit of what it is and uh, what's the ideology behind it? Yeah, it's uh, open source hardware. So the ideology is you are thinking how you can cover the needs of the masses of the people. So you are asking yourself the question, how can people produce their own food? How can they build their own houses, generate electricity, and just build stuff? Mm -hmm. And then you're thinking, I mean, we have this already in, in our civilization. Mm -hmm. And then you're thinking, okay, so what is the smallest scale to do all this? And uh, that's what we are trying to pursue with the Global Village Construction Set. Okay. So this is the set of the 50 machines with which you can do all this on the smallest scale possible. Okay. And, uh, I mean, this is perfect for our zombie apocalypse because once everything goes to, goes to zombies, we're going to need this uh, Global Village Construction Set to rebuild society and actually have food yeah i mean these guys have got the the right idea they're trying to help people like in third world countries developing nations and what that uh be able to build their own villages and sustain themselves but you know right. uh that's only you know one goal i think of the project uh the way that we look at it because once you have an open source instruction set for how to build all of the tools to be able to do a small scale civilization, not only have you helped bootstrap up everyone uh, that uh, may be having a hard time participating in a globalized economy right now, but you're also creating a situation where you have a set of instructions for rebuilding civilization after any disasters happen in a very efficient and cheap manner. And that is also an extremely valuable uh, goal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, the, interesting here, the interesting thing here is that uh, because the, all the information is saved digitally, uh, this, I mean, all digitally saved information could stay if we continue with the digital technology mm -hmm. for hundreds of years. Mm -hmm. So uh, what you are creating right now, what we're doing, uh, this value, digital value, will can be used for all other generations yeah. which are coming. Yeah. And it is just amazing when you think that, wow, our work it's not only for us, it's not only for uh, our community, it's not only for the communities in the other continents or in other parts of uh, our country, mm -hmm. but it's also for all other generations right. which are coming. Right, right. Well, we can do this right now, and that's just amazing. A long-lasting impact started now. Yeah. So you guys have 50 tools, I mean, hardcore you know, tools like farming, like tractors and brick builders and such. Um, who decided on what kind of machines to actually build? Like who decided on the 50? And how did that, how did they make those decisions? Martin decided on the 50 machines. Okay. And uh, what is important to know that all the machines have specific values. Uh, you have open source, you have low cost, you have modularity, uh, do-it-yourself, uh, high performance, you have to use 
as much as possible local resources and all this should be done with open business models mm -hmm. so you have uh, you have also more values but all these machines uh, should follow these values and uh, we have a specification where uh, we have like for I think there were 42 questions mm -hmm. for and uh, each question brings a point and then you for every machine you can have a score okay. and uh, I don't think we have officially published the scores for all machines but generally just answering all the questions for the machines then you can come up with a set I see so the top scoring ones become the set and the low yes. scoring ones just yeah okay y yes and uh, it can be argued generally whether some of the machines fits in the set or not <laughs> but uh, uh, we don't want to spend time with arguing <laughs> right we want just, just we want just it. to build them yeah yeah, yeah. At the end of the day, you finish the set, you know, you, you get all the plans done for that, you know, the ones that are included initially. And, you know, there's nothing stopping you from continuing on with the project and adding more beyond the initial set. You know, there, there's, there really is no reason to sit there and argue too much about what to include because you can continue doing it. You could make a subset later and just keep going. Yes, yes. Hmm. So, I mean... um, like how, so did he just sit down and come up, like look at a list of all the possible tools and then rate them? Or was it like, well, you know, I've had experience in farming and I know that I required X, Y, Z. So I'll start with this first and rate this smaller group first. Well, I think, I, well, first I'm not sure, but I think <laughs> both. I think okay. both. Okay. Uh, I mean, it all comes uh, just with natural progression. You see what are your needs, and then you're thinking more about the future, mm -hmm. and then you specify, okay, we will need this and this and this. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Okay. Now, um, in terms of uh, actually, so this started in 2006, if I'm not mistaken. And um, yes. how, like, how long has it taken to get the machinery that builds these uh, these tools uh, what do you know what do you mean what do you mean by machinery so she's asking how how much work and effort and money and time mm -hmm. did it take to uh, get all of the tools required to build these tools oh <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure again I think uh, so the tools you need for building um, it, you're acquiring them just when it's needed. Uh, oh, okay. okay. It's uh, interesting. Uh, it, coming from more of a software side of things, we call it bootstrapping. Uh, the project obviously has to have a lot of tools in order to make the prototypes uh, for these open source designs. But I think uh, once they have their set uh, complete, that they won't necessarily have to use tools outside of the set. They can continue designing more with the tools included in the set. That'll be really interesting. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, so then how many people does it take to put these machines together, to put some the tools that you guys have um, prototyped together? Well... That's a good question. Mm -hmm. um, I know I've seen the number so, like 20 being thrown around a bit in the FAQ, but I, I mean, it, does that mean it's 20 non-specialized people or? No, 20 people, that's too much. Oh, <laughs> I, was thinking more, I was thinking more like, it depends also how quickly you want to do it. But... Uh, Currently, I think most of the tools till now at Factory Farm mm -hmm. uh, were built, I suppose, like, uh, but in parallel mm -hmm. by two, two or maximum three people. What? <laughs> it's great, isn't it? Two or three people? 
uh, at the same my, I guess this is my wow. I guess <laughs> but uh, but uh, so you have uh, the the prototyping of the machine so it takes time and it is possible that uh, as a linear sequence in time mm -hmm. before that there were more people who worked on the machine I mean you were using g also the global knowledge <laughs> mm -hmm. through the internet mm -hmm. to ask questions and experts and uh, to call some people. So you, you're using also this knowledge and your um, for the prototyping. Mm -hmm. So, so actually, can you can you take us through the process of the development of a single tool as to like what all happens during that time span from? start from just saying okay this is what we want to make to okay now it's made okay let's try um i think first and m maybe the most hard part is the design so you um you have to you have to get a good design mm -hmm. uh which has all the values or or let's say most of the values uh, for the GVCS machines um, so the low cost the modularity the yes okay yes yep. yes and uh, this this was proved with the power cube with the CV press with the tractor so the designs were good enough and now we are working more on them mm -hmm. uh, but for example we tried with the steam engine and we couldn't get a good enough design. Mm -hmm. So um, Mark Norton, who developed one design of the steam engine, after he developed the design, uh, it was given for a peer review, mm -hmm. but there were few concerns about the design. Mm -hmm. And uh, then the design work stopped ah. until we find uh, a better design. So the first step is design. And then when we have a good design, it gets prototyped. In most cases, this happens at factory farm, mm -hmm. uh, where you have either marching or the people who are coming with dedicated project visits for the prototyping. Mm -hmm. uh, or, um, for example, there's... Uh, metal shop, swagger shop near factory farm or at other place where the prototyping uh, has taken place for some machines mm -hmm. or could take place. And uh, so so then is the prototyping phase. You're building one prototype and then um, you just see how it works and uh, what you can improve again. Sure. And then you're making second prototype, third prototype, um, until you have the final version. Okay. And um, are these, so once they're quote unquote done, are the designs ever improved upon when something new comes along? Or are they for, for all intents and purposes done until the last tool is finished? It, it depends on the people. Okay. It depends on the people who are using them and uh, building them. Um, we have the power cube. Mm -hmm. It's already officially finalized. But there is one guy, Tom Griffin, mm -hmm. who is building it uh, on another place, oh. I think in Texas. Okay. And he's making improvements. <laughs> oh, great. So great. Uh, it's not something fixed. Sure. Uh, uh, you have, I mean, you have the third prototype, the final version, but if you see that uh, you can do it better, great. Yeah. So you add the improvements. Right. That's one of the beautiful parts about the whole open hardware concept. Uh, because it's open and because it's legally protected is open, there's absolutely nothing stopping anybody from taking what they see as a good idea, making it better, and republishing it so that other people have access to that information. It's a great, great thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So um, in terms of these tools, like the prototypes and such, how, how are these 
uh, tested for endurance and for uh, usability? Like, is there an actual farm that they're being tested on? Or do you have farmers that you say, okay, can you guys test these machines and see what you think about them? Um, okay, so there's first factory farm. Okay. The, uh, the goal is to have all the machines working uh, at factory farm. Uh, testing happened with uh, at factory farm with the compressor brick press, with the tractor. Uh, they were we tested it, I think, one or two months ago, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, it had problems, which is very good. I mean, through the intensive testing, we discovered problems right. with the machine, and. I think uh, the the fix is known, uh, and now we have to add all these fixes mm-hmm. which we have discovered. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this is one option for testing. Uh, other testing options, I haven't heard real examples, but uh, one guy almost replicated uh, the CB press mm. without automation. So basically, he's able to test it <laughs> and see well, how it, needs it works. To. Right, right. Yeah. And have you, I mean, do you guys have, so f- um, what, I guess I should ask this question before I ask the next one. Um, what projects do you guys have that are uh, mostly done? So the goal to the end of the year is PowerCube, CB Press tractor and soil pulverizer okay uh, we have we have them as final versions uh, in which we will need to include also the last improvements which we have okay and the goal is to open source them to the to Christmas this, this will be the Christmas gift to the world great, great. <laughs> open sourcing these four machines so they're not they're not yet released. As of yet, uh, no. Okay. I mean, uh, some documentation is released, okay. and that's uh, how the CB press got replicated. Yeah. Um, but it's not. Uh, it's not completely. Yet. Yes. Okay. Yes, it's not completely. Okay. And have you? So then, have you guys had interest from uh, local farmers or um, even some of the communities in third world countries? you know, contacting you guys saying we'd love to not test it, but we'd love to start using these tools? Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah? I mean, yeah, yeah. From all around the world. Uh, Africa, two or three people organizations from India, from Europe, of course, um, South America. Wow. Uh, the, th- the thing is that w- we're, I mean... We we haven't yet given, uh, as we said, uh, the complete documentation for mm-hmm. these people to replicate the machines. Mm-hmm. And it is not as easy as software, <laughs> right. just copy-paste. Right. So you have to have the infrastructure to create also the machines. Right. And uh, this needs some preparation uh, and then going through the documentation, understanding, and then building. Mm-hmm. Um, Yes, but uh, wow, well, interests from all around the world. That's great. So, um, are they being like? I know you guys are going to be releasing plans for the actual machines and such, but are you also releasing any plans or documentation for, as you said, the preparation po- portion of this, or is that, um, or, or is there like a general list of tools that you guys have used mm. that other people end up getting? We have, I think uh, we have a list of the current tools at Factory Farm. But generally, right now, we're not focused on the, on the infrastructure. Prep. Sure. Yes. Sure. Um, we, we try to share now the designs. Right now, we're in construction. Mm-hmm. So we're building uh, a habitat uh, lab mm-hmm. where people can live, uh, the prototypers and documenters. Right. 
and a construction site, and we're sharing uh, the designs. Okay. Yeah, the and three I mean, designs of the buildings. Yeah. We're sharing partially uh, the progress, so right. how the building gets built, but it's not again like full <laughs> concrete right. documentation right. how this could right. be replicated. So well, I mean, the you guys focus have... is more on the GVCS. Yeah, you guys have enough documentation as it is with just the the global village construction set not to yeah yeah, yeah. okay i get it i get it um now so, with that oh. said though uh when they get uh more of the tools uh designed and ready to go they're going to be able to come up with a specific order in which you can build them because some of them can be built without a lot of infrastructure Right. And you can use the ones that you've built to build the rest of them. Right. You can bring yourself up to the level where the set will be able to repair itself, where parts out of one thing can go into other things if something breaks and allow you to create a new part. Right? Yeah. That's exactly. the beauty of it. It's great. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. That is cool. So um, then... Let's see. You guys have four tools currently at a final part, a uh, final state. Um, I I saw on the website that the goal was by the end of 2012 to have to have all 50 tools done. Um, given that four tools are done now at the end of 2011, how likely is it that they're going to be done by 2012, or is there a new goal date? Well. Uh... That's a big goal. Um, what what we have to consider here is uh, that we will get the resources mm -hmm. needed to complete the goal. Mm -hmm. So this includes money. Uh, basically, it's po it's quite possible uh, for this to happen. We need uh, the people. We need first we need the infrastructure to accommodate more people. Mm -hmm. And then we need the people to for the prototyping, and uh, plus funding. Yeah. And I guess more factors and more factors. Sure. Uh, the plan is the plan is next year. Uh, you have twelve uh, prototypers. Uh, at some point. I think we start with four documenters and at some point there will be also 12 and all they will they will do parallel work so uh, what the, uh, some prototypers will start with one machine others with another mm. and in this way you can prototype in parallel sure sure so I, I think it's interesting I mean um, you guys are essentially creating competition for the current manufacturers of tools like these farm tools and such. Um, have they mm, have they been worried <laughs> and or have they been helping? Um, because I mean they obviously have their their own uh, blueprints for their tools like have they offered to give you guys older versions of them or let you work with the people who design them etc well from big companies no uh it is mostly person to person mm. so we were speaking with the people whether they would like to open source their knowledge mm -hmm. and some people agree i mean they're happy to do it and um uh, also some organizations, but um, I guess we, until now we didn't have really success with uh, our organizations or a larger group of people hmm. helping the project. Hmm. But have, and have you guys contacted any of these larger companies to see if they'd be willing to help out? Or like, or is that kind of counter... Productive. Mm, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not sure whether we've done this. Hmm. I don't think so. Okay. Okay. Yeah, because I mean, I didn't know if you guys. Hopefully, you guys won't get, w wouldn't get any trouble from these companies. <laughs> you know, but. Uh, 
but that's it's always Let's a possibility. See, I, mean, I mean we're totally open right so this is this is what we're pursuing we want to open source the machines right. and we're totally open for people organizations or companies who would like to work on that right Right. So maybe an easier way to approach that subject is how much trouble uh, goes into making sure that the designs uh, are such that nothing is patented, uh, that everything can be open sourced without uh, any uh, companies being able to come up with lawsuits to try to shut it down. Yes, this is one very important uh, part of the design work. So the people who are doing the designs, uh, either they have to have already the knowledge or they have to research whether the design violates some patents. Mm. Wow. That can be an extremely difficult and expensive process. Patent searches are expensive. Patent attorneys are expensive. Yeah. So, and do you guys have a patent attorney who's helping out with this? I'm not aware. Ah. <laughs> All right, patent attorneys out there. Someone get on board. <laughs> Stat. <laughs> hmm, interesting. Okay. Um, and I guess you could talk, there's a lot of collaboration, you know, obviously from around the world. Like, you're in Germany, but the factory farm is in, what, Missouri? U.S.? Yes. Right, yes. so middle of the U.S. Um, what kind of uh, tools do you guys use for collaboration and how, how do you guys manage all of the different people from the different areas? Uh, tools, we, we, uh, we have the wiki for common information sharing mm -hmm. and the communication is just through email, Skype. Well. Mostly, well. Yes. And how many, so how many people are working on this? Do you know, like volunteers and such? Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's really hard question. Oh. Um, like, is there a co core group of people with et cetera, you uh, know? Uh, partially, yes, but uh, it's changing also. Mm. So, like, a few months ago, we were... Um, about 77 people officially uh, there's one page uh, development team in the wiki we were about 77 mm. and what they noticed is that uh, all these people are only one part of the people with which I spoke so uh, with the people I had contact and uh, these are people who had either more contribution to OIC or just a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, I expect like, let's say, 100 or 150 people. And the thing is that I also, I'm not aware of all the people who have contributed <laughs> or are, are sure. contributing right now sure. to OIC. So it's, I don't know, really. <laughs> sure. Uh, that is a wonderful problem to have, though. <laughs> you know, there's so many people helping that, you know, you can't even really keep track of all the helpful people. I mean, that's a good thing. Right. Oh, yeah. Huh. So, yeah, my, my expectations at that time were like, well, let's say three, four hundred people, maybe this year, mm. who were helping or who are helping. And after the TED talk and uh, so much attention, well, <laughs> <laughs> a lot more than yeah. I mean, yeah. that's not even counting all of the people who are just helping financially through Kickstarter. It's like there's got to be thousands and thousands of people who have donated to it. Mm -hmm. Yes, the Kickstarter right now it has more than one thousand. So <laughs> that's great. That's great. So then, uh, you know, in terms of like money and such. Are there specific budgets for each tool or like how are you guys? Uh, it's kind of hard to say because a lot of, I mean, most of it, if not all of it is donated yeah. money. So, you know, how do you guys end up budgeting all that? Yes. So uh, on average for the prototypes, you we have a de defined on average, we have 50K okay. for the three versions okay. of a machine. Uh, 
some machines are more simple, they need less money, but some machines need much more money than 50k. Sure. Uh, as money wise, all the donations at whatever money comes, uh, uh, I cannot tell for sure how much is that, but it's like the majority of it goes into the GVCS development. And of course now for the construction. Mm-hmm. Uh, and a small amount goes to the technical infrastructure at Factory Farm. Sure, I mean, you have means, to have that uh, at least. Yeah. yeah, yes, which is energy, internet, or small stuff like that. Sure. No, you can't eat. What are you talking about? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Wow. I think this is such an amazing project. It really is, because... and I think everyone agrees on wow. this point that it that it is. It's just it's one of the best things that we could be doing uh, with our collective human effort right now. I mean, it's the best. Thing. Like all of them, I think it's great that all the money and the time of these people goes into opening up the documentation of these tools that are. I mean, I mean, they're not even like fluffy tools. You know, it's not like. Uh, you're giving someone a feather boa, you know, to make them feel pretty or something. It's like actually tools to help people survive and to help people be able to support themselves without relying on uh, the global economy, so to speak, you know. And I'm, <laughs> I'm just in <laughs> awe, just in awe. Um, so, like, what are you know? I, I am surprised that hundreds of thousands of people aren't involved. You know, are there are there certain misconceptions about the project that are holding it back, or you know, like what is it? <laughs> what's keeping what's keeping the rest of the world from from jumping on on board? Well, I think Desire. they were just they were just waiting for it to be on Zombie Tech so that they could hear about it. Oh, I guess you know they're they're, <laughs> they're so worried about zombies they're not paying attention to Kickstarter enough. Well, if you're worried about zombies, go help the the open source ecology people. <laughs> Goodness gracious! I really think uh, it comes to decision mm. how you want to live, mm. uh, because for me. That's that's how I got involved. I was searching for uh, basically sustainability projects which are good for humanity. Mm. I searched 15 months uh, in my free time. So I had the usual software job. Mm-hmm. And in all other free time, I was looking, okay, what are doing the people? What's happening? What's useful? Uh, why it's useful? For who it's useful? To what degree? And they were very interesting projects, but all of them were like only in one direction. Sure. Food, renewable energy, and stuff like that. Mm. Uh, and when I found about open source ecology, it was wow. Yeah. It's, it's integrated like maybe not all of what I have seen, but a lot, a lot, right. a lot right. into one project. And... And basically, uh, this was the best project which I found. And uh, I became a true fan. Mm-hmm. This was August uh, last year. And in December, at the end of December, I understood that I don't know anything <laughs> about open source ecology <laughs> because <laughs> it's just so broad, so much. And... Uh, I just saw that I don't know anything. So I spent like uh, one week just reading the wiki and yeah. looking through all the videos yeah. and just learn, wow, that's so cool and learn and learn w- w- what is it about and learn more. And I had to spend one week just to get an overview <laughs> <laughs> about the project. Right. Yeah, I mean, as a software developer, it's not really your job in life to know uh, how to use a plasma cutter, let alone (laughs) how to design one from scratch, right? Uh, Yes, that's true. (laughs) But I mean, if you're looking at open source ecology and all the good things which uh, are embedded in the project and the implications of that, it's, yeah, it's just a lot. And... um, 
So I got some overview. And then um, in April, when we had the TED talk, mm -hmm. um, we had really a lot of work. And uh, I, I was, I was, I mean, for, for open source ecology. So I worked at my normal work and then I go back <laughs> at home and, and start with open source ecology. And mm -hmm. the first week I slept five hours. Uh, there was so much work. And then I just uh, saw that, uh, well, you have to make a choice. Mm. How do you want to live? Do you want still to continue <laughs> the usual way? Or do you really want to see this happen? And do you, mm. do you really want to help yeah. this happen? Yeah. And it really comes to a decision for the person itself, whether he would like to take the step and and it's just amazing i mean when i started when i took the decision wow <laughs> so are you full-time involved then with uh open source ecology yes wow. yes that's great see it's uh it's people like nikolai here that are taking uh, the, the the advantage that they've been given as part of the I guess the upper echelon of technology based society here and instead of just uh, living uh, suspended up in the air by what's been done to in the past to bring them up to that level he's made a decision to use that position to try to lend a hand to help other people uh, join him up there and that is a difficult decision hmm. and most people choose the other route they choose to just go on with their lives and pretend that there aren't any problems in the world and they don't do anything to help hmm. so uh, thank you for what you're doing yeah. we appreciate it we don't you know really need your help we have everything we need around us but we can still appreciate uh, that uh, what you're doing is going to help a lot of people yeah so everybody involved in the project thank you it's appreciated Agreed. wow so what uh so you've mentioned in terms of what people can do you know obviously donate their their money um donate even their expertise in terms of designing um oh go ahead yeah i would just say i mean it's it's not just about money or whatever it's uh just see how you would like to contribute it's it's so simple hmm. that's great so um you know i was thinking back to when you were talking about like all of di the different communities that uh have contacted you um wh what happens to communities where the populate where reading and language is a difficult issue Oh, um, I didn't have uh, such an example. No. Um, I mean, I think we're a little bit far uh, with experience uh, with uh, such communities. Mm -hmm. I, I spoke with uh, two, three people from Africa, which told me that they have some infrastructure okay. to start doing this. But after that, we didn't keep in touch. So I don't know what happened. Uh, what I want to say with with that is that there was a strong interest. Mm -hmm. So, and the people uh, saw that uh, they could teach the like the young people in Africa to build, uh, for example, the CB press, uh, and. Just there was this strong interest, and they saw the potential. Mm -hmm. uh, until now, we don't have uh, some real example. Okay. Well, I mean, there. and you guys, you guys have uh, four tools done out of the fifty. So it's it's not until you're able to roll those out really at the end of this year that you'll be yes, able to yes. to see how that affects. Gotcha. Yes, and it's mostly because of the documentation. Hmm. 
Now, do you so, know? So, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> I mean, so when you have the documentation, um, I think there were also s uh, somebody interested about replicating the CB press in Africa, if I'm not wrong, recently. Oh, okay. Uh, and uh, I think, so for w what you need for the replication is the infrastructure, yeah. documentation, and skills, people. Sure. That's what's needed. Sure. And uh, so, yeah, <laughs> documentation should be finished and then we expect replications. Yeah, so it's, uh, it's good that the uh, documentation set is being developed in English because English is sort of like for technical oh. stuff, it's the most obvious choice. But are there plans to uh, start bringing in translators at some point to create uh, localized versions? Uh, plans from factory farm? No. <laughs> so it again comes to the people. Okay. Uh, uh, and that makes sense. I mean, it's an open source project, and whoever wants to help improve it by, you know, creating a localized version for their own uh, uh, native speaking area, it's, you know, it's up to them to do it. And that's, that's the way to approach it, I think. Yes. Um, one of the easiest way for now is in the wiki. We have... Uh, I mean, every page in the wiki, you can translate it into, I think, the most common languages. Hmm. Yeah, I like, noticed that oh, it has the uh, Google uh, machine translation built right into it, which is kind of neat. Not only. I mean, there's also, a, uh, maybe not in every page, but for some pages, you can put a header, a translation header, and then you can create a page with, in which you just translate the text. In your language. Oh, wonderful. So, that, so that's possible. So, uh, Addy, uh, you speak two languages. Are you, Three languages, actually. Uh, mm -hmm. Are you going to start translating pages? Uh, I don't think I'm that good. <laughs> You're you going to do a ma <laughs> Mandarin version here? <laughs> they, they, they might uh, look at my writing and wonder what third grader came along to try to attack, attack it. But... Uh, <laughs> No, no, no. I'm I'm not quite that good. <laughs> but I mean, that's I guess that's a good good thing about using a wiki is that you can just use the online resources that are available to to do such translation things and that way you don't have to hire you know translators yeah. specifically. Now, I had a that. question. Um <clears throat> I saw some mention of a uh uh computer-aided design, computer-aided machining. Uh, software platform. Uh, what's going on with that? Mm, can you explain more? What kind of software platform? Well, I, I saw on the uh, site that they were talking about potentially doing CAD uh -huh. CAM uh, stuff, and that would allow you guys to use your own open format for saving all of the design documents, uh, the blueprints, and uh, the G code and stuff like that for actually replicating and building. Yes, yes. I think uh, there was. I still don't know the details, but I think there's still not an open source or good open source CAD CAM system which integrates um, the whole process of designing and producing the files for manufacturing. And I think that's the goal of the of this project to make it, to make it open source and also to make it easier, because I think there were some steps which which are taking too much time. Yeah, uh, are are there enough people involved working on that aspect, or do you do you guys need more programmers? On on this aspect, I think. I'm not aware of somebody working right now on that. Okay. Hmm. Well, a and lot of our listeners uh, are experienced in software design, and a lot of them are experienced in manufacturing and uh, oh. computer-aided machining and computer-aided mm -hmm. design. So um, if any of you guys out there have the free time and you're looking for something good to spend it on, uh, definitely this check out this project because yeah. they could use your help. Yeah, that would be great. Just send an email. Huh. 
So I, I know that um, a lot of these tools seem to require gas or oil um, for functioning. Are there plans on making them more um, earth friendly? <laughs> Well, yes. <laughs> they have designs for gasifier, uh, steam generator, steam engine, uh, solar collector, and that sort of thing. And I, I, I'm sure that the, the idea is that once they have those things up, they can pretty much phase out petroleum-based uh, power cube. Exactly. So mm -hmm. for now, we're using steel or some of the petroleum-based uh, um, fuels. Mm -hmm. Uh, only because we want to be able to create the machines now. And uh, if we have a technology which is Earth-friendly, <laughs> then we use it mm -hmm. and replace uh, the old technologies. Gotcha, gotcha. Huh. And so I know, um, so Wester was just asking about software, folks. Uh, are most of the people required to like take a crash course in learning how to weld or learning about like manufacturing in order to help at the factory farm um it, it depends it depends uh some people c are coming with skills there were people who came without welding skills mm-hmm but nevertheless, they could integrate very well in the production run. So I think uh, it's on a case-by-case -case okay. basis. Okay. Wow. All right. We're uh, approaching our 10-minute mark here. So uh, we've gone through most of this episode without talking too much about uh, uh, zombies. So, But that's uh, because, I mean, I'm just going to reiterate. When the zombies come... And when they kill all the the guys over at the, the factory people, farm are going to survive. Obviously, exactly. That is exact. Well, okay. I have a question then. Are you guys doing any zombie defense projects? <laughs> I am not aware of that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, so <laughs> Nikolai, you're going to have to get on that. <laughs> hey, this is a real problem. I mean, if zombies show up at the farm, okay, and I they guess we can feed them. Well, we have food. <laughs> well, you have but people. Not, but not people. <laughs> we can give them food and place to sleep. <laughs> I don't know if you want to give zombies that, but uh, <laughs> but your generosity, I'm sure, is appreciated. <laughs> so, or we can, l or and uh, what else we can do is we can teach them. You can teach zombies to build their own community. <laughs> self-sustaining green open community of zombies oh that's great well, what are they gonna do they're gonna make like people farms and that won't be very good <laughs> oh, okay that wasn't a good example <laughs> you're a pacifist aren't you <laughs> so um now, Gosh. Addie has a set of questions <laughs> that we ask all of our guests uh, just so that we can keep at least one thing about each episode the same. Uh, because, you know, we talk to so many different people that do so many different interesting things. It's always a, a bit of a roller coaster ride. But at the, uh, the tail end of the show here, she likes to ask a couple of questions. That's true. So um, what three tools... And, you know, I would even say that this is a really funny question for this particular guest. Well, I what know. three tools? Well, not three. He only needs one tool, the Global Village construction set. All right, that's cheating, though. <laughs> All right, but you know what? You know what? For sake of awesomeness, I will allow you to consider the Global Village construction set as a single tool. I don't know how you're going to carry it on your back, <laughs> but... Oh, okay. So, <laughs> what three <laughs> tools would you uh, bring to your zombie apocalypse bunker? Oh, <laughs> okay. Let's say the GVCS, and <laughs> I would not bring tools. I would bring more people. Oh, <laughs> that's great. Yes, we need people for that, for sure. And uh, also some communication 
devices to communicate with the other people. Okay. Or what, what communication device would you go for? Uh, I'm not sure. Something which is gives freedom to the people. Addie is a ham radio <laughs> operator, so she's very much uh, interested in the communications aspect of this. That's true. You know, since you're going to be the one bringing the GVCS, I think I, we might have to give you the uh, coordinates to our zombie apocalypse bunker. Because, heck yeah, if we can get all those tools. That's one I'm thing sure that we'll I do. Just fine. That I do note is missing from the G the GVCS. I don't see any uh, radio equipment in there. Yeah, um, oh, that's true. It's true. I see. so um, some of the machines here do not include. There, there are more aspects. So from one side. Um, the GVCS is just the starting point, mm -hmm. and you could build it later. Uh, the other point is that I'm not, I don't know how it's with the radio, but if it's easy to be done, and if they're already do it yourself radio and stuff like that, uh. then, uh, then we're not, uh, not it's covering not included that. Sure. Sure. in the set. That makes sense. We ha there are I a mean, lot of plans I for DIY radios now. That's true. Yeah. Ah, yes, okay. <laughs> yep, so, you, I mean, you got it. So, that's so we have it. I mean, we, we as a humanity, have it open sourced. Got it. Got it. Um, and let's see. Where would you go in the event of a zombie apocalypse? Like, would you stay in Germany, or is there, like, another place you would head off to? I guess I will be there where I am. Right where you and are. Yes, I don't know where, but I'll be there. And uh, the first thing I'll do is find, or not find, <laughs> <laughs> but connect with the people and see what we want to do and uh, what should be done. Sure. We're working on building our, uh, our ability to connect with our group of people. Uh, that uh, in case anything were to happen to the internet or anything like that, uh, we're working on uh, antennas and radios and such so that we can do long-distance communication completely separate from the uh, the global infrastructure. It's kind of fun. It's Addie's project. She's <laughs> super smart. Yeah. <laughs> do you open source it? Uh, I think a lot of what we'll be doing will be open source, yeah. Yeah. As far as I'm currently aware. Uh, one of our friends, uh, Mark Van de Wettering, is open sourcing his satellite tracker uh, program that runs on a game Duino microcontroller. Mm -hmm. And another friend of ours is taking that open source project and creating an open source... Uh, antenna uh, positioner. Yeah, satellite antenna uh, positioner that can automatically move the antenna to track satellites across the sky. And then I think uh, as a group, we'll be working on some radio designs that we'll be able to talk through those uh, satellites to one another. Uh, so if we have, you know, one node in one part of the country and one in the other, uh, both the antennas can track at the same satellite at the same time and we can actually talk through. Perfect. So you're open sourcing the communication infrastructure. There we go. We've got that that aspect covered then. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, gosh, I you know. And that's that's most of what we actually do o outside of our zombie tech show. We have our own uh, our own uh, internet Little show DIY where thing. we open source lots of ideas, uh, showing people how to do things. Yeah. But gosh, guys, folks listening to this, you know if if you're tired of well i don't know how you can be tired of leds blinky leds but if you're tired of little blinky leds and little arduino things and you want to work on helping you know do like designing hardcore stuff like i, I i'll just go through the list here ceb press cement mixer sawmill tractor bulldozer cedar hay rake back, backhoe Micro, micro tractor, rototiller, I mean, just endless, endless uh, 
projects that need to be done for this. You know, if you want to donate your time, um, do they would they contact you or do they just contact or look through the wiki to see where they can contact someone to uh, just just check the wiki. Okay. All the information All right. is there. Okay. And actually, if you have experience with Arduino, uh, you can upgrade your skills and uh, uh, you can automate uh, the CB press because it's using cool. al already Arduino and other machines are using Arduino too. Awesome. Awesome. Cool. And uh, the site is opensourceecology.org. It's really a very extens extensive site. Um, you know, it took... Like the FAQ alone, I had to figure out what questions to ask that weren't already answered by the FAQ because it's 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 pretty comprehensive. Um, and do you have any sites that you want to advertise or? Uh, uh, I think one easier way to say that is uh, obviously you can find all this stuff at opensourceecology.org, but uh, we're wondering, Nikolai, is there? Are there any other projects that you're aware of that you'd like people to know about? Sure. it's a good one. Okay. I mean, you have open source ecology. Uh, we're trying. We will create something in Europe uh, with open source ecology. Okay. And there, um, so the website is oseurope.org. Um Cool. Awesome. Yeah. Excellent. Are you going to be uh, uh, heading that up? Uh, is that going to be your baby? Um, it's it's no no one person's baby, but <laughs> <laughs> we're just we're growing community. We're already like um, ten serious people, twenty who are partially committed, and we're just now exploring the options awesome. what we want to do. Working on getting some land out there. Oh yeah. Yeah, uh, for now, uh, direction is Spain, and wow. we'll check one land there. How Spain. It is. Yeah. Hex, yeah, like let's go to Spain. Fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, forget that American uh, <laughs> farm. We're, we're, Missouri, we're going to Spain. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Y'all accept Americans over there, right? <laughs> Well, as long as we can use a welder. <laughs> <laughs> Make ourselves useful. Cool. No, I mean, it, is, it will be really great if we have more places for prototyping the technology. Yeah. yeah. It will bring uh, so, so much more open source uh, technology and uh, innovation and, and so on. It'll be really, really interesting to me when the in a couple of years here when everything is done, everything's up, and we start to see it happening in uh, developing countries. Uh, and when you start to see it sort of cross over with Kiva, uh, if you guys don't know what Kiva is, Kiva.org is sort of a, uh, a a bank for developing countries where the the, mm -hmm. the source of the money is just you know. People <laughs> who say, okay, I've got this extra money. I'm going to just lend it out yeah. to folks who can't get loans. So, you know, I could go to Kiva, put my money up there and say, you know, lend it out to somebody in, you know, uh, uh, Central Africa. And they could use it to pick up the things that they need to get started for building their global village construction set. They pay me back and, you know, that's good and dandy, but then they've got their tools ready and they can start being self-sufficient. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the two projects work very well together, I think. Right. Yep. Cool. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Nikolai, for coming to talk to us. Um, and hopefully, you know, if, if uh, 2012, you know, at the end of the year, next at the end of the year next year, maybe we can get you on again and see how uh, the progress is going on then. Yeah, would be glad to. Cool. All right. Thank you, Nikolai. We very much appreciate you coming on. Um, as we said before, you can find out all the information about this uh, opensourceecology.org slash wiki for the wiki. And uh, you can get this show every week at zombietech.tv. There's an RSS feed, an iTunes link. You can get it automatically downloaded to your phone, whatever you want to do. 
uh, and we put it up every single Thursday. Yep. That's it for me, Addie. That's it. All right. We'll see you guys next week. Yep. Bye. Bye.